What's up, Sons? It's Blind Red with Son of a Tech once again, and we have another new miner from SRB Miner version 2.2.3, which has significantly improved the hash rates on Dynex. We're going to go over what the new hash rates are. I'm going to give you guys a couple tips on some overclocks that we figured out as a community over on Locals at sonofatech.locals.com. And then I'll show you guys what I did as far as updating the miner within Hive OS. Let's get into it right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is myself. I recently launched a crypto mining e-course at sonofatech.com and it includes nine steps to cover when you decide to start your crypto mining journey. This is specifically pertaining to 2023 crypto mining profits and taking advantage of the down market to achieve skyrocketing growth as we move into the next halving of Bitcoin. You'll learn buying mining equipment in a bear market, using outside investment to speculative mine, begin mining once profit is established, sell mine crypto to pay for electricity, hold and prep for the bull run, sell at the top of the bull market, sell mining equipment at the top of the bull market, and begin investing in land and power so that you can bring in outside investors to utilize excess resources. Thanks everybody for your support, and I hope you enjoy the course. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. The first step, of course, is taking a look at the new SRB miner version 2.2.3. They improved the mining performance on Dynex for AMD and NVIDIA. We did see improvements on both, nearly double the hash rate, and sometimes in, in other cases even better. Not to mention also reduce the power consumption too once we started locking the cores in on NVIDIA. These are all updated at this point, but I will utilize one as an example so that you guys can get an idea of how I did this. Now, in some cases, what you can do, of course, is always go to your flight sheet and you can uh, pick a flight sheet that is a custom miner, right? And you can edit that custom miner. And we talked about this before. And then if you scroll down, you can get the custom miner image right here and you can just paste that in and go from there. But in the case that you want to dual mine or continue to actually utilize SRB miner in the miner field, and this allows you to actually have the second coin, you may wanna go through this process. It's a new process that I've been utilizing because I do prefer this, and I'm just gonna show you how to do it. You're gonna to need to get shell access. You can either do this locally on your network with PuTTY, or through Hive Shell, or you could do Shell in a box if Hive Shell's not working. And then we'll get into there in just a second. And I'll show you guys what we did. All right, so Hive Shell is up. Let's see if it's gonna be fast enough. It was being slow the other day, but first things first, we're gonna to wanna to create a, a script file and we can just do a quick nano. So you'll do a pseudo nano, and then we're just gonna do SRB23 dot sh right or i guess it would be 223 223 dot sh the the name of the file doesn't matter but if you want to co copy this you can do that we're going to press enter then we're going to go back to the github and you can see here that this is the option to update script from 2.2.2 to 2.2.3 you're going to go ahead and copy this out do a control c and you will click here and say paste from browser paste it into the little field there and then it will put this entire script in here. At this point with Nano, you can do Control X and press Y to save and press Enter. And then we need to modify the file permission. So we're gonna run what's known as a chmod command. So it's chmod. We're gonna give it full permissions. You could do plus X if you only want executable. And then we're gonna do srb223.sh. And then if we run an ls command, what you'll notice is that that file is actually yellow. And that means we can execute it. So to execute from the directory you're in, we're just gonna do the period and forward slash or dot forward slash in the file name. So we'll do srb223.sh and press enter. At this point, what it does is it will actually unpackage all of 2.2.3 and then put it in the 2.2.2 .2 .2 package. So 
when you're in Hive OS, it still will report as version 2.2.2, but you'll see the hash rate improvements when you're actually running it. Just a little kind of note there. It's a little awkward, but what that does do is once again, now at this point, if I wanted to test out dual mining, I can come into here and, and just test out dual mining. I don't have to change anything. It's a lot easier in my humble opinion. Plus once the miner actually updates to 2.2.3, it'll replace those files and I don't have to change my flight sheet. And that's kind of important to me as well. I don't want to be updating my flight sheet all the time. If I was using a custom miner and then they add support for 2.2.3, then I'm creating another flight sheet or whatever, redoing that flight sheet. <coughs> and this way, it's just update and go. I don't have to make any changes later on down the line. So that script makes things a little bit easier. Now let's talk about hash rates. All the hash rates have significantly improved. On our 1660 supers, we're running the negative 1004 in the memory and the power level at 80. But we did lock down the clock on the memory. And I'll show you here if we go to our flight sheet to 1305 so we ran the dash dash gpu clock 1305 and we ran a gpu clock offset of 100 and that is giving us our current results the 1660 supers will get higher hash rates but not higher hash rate per watt meaning this is a more efficient build and this is around 420 to 430 hash a second at anywhere from 40 to 50 watts depending on the card and a lot of all of those factors, cooling, etc. So the 1660 supers are running pretty fantastic. Taking a look at some of the rest of these, I left the 1060s on Casbug because they weren't performing that well on Dynex, except for the 1066 gig, which we'll talk about here in a second. That's in a different rig. Those were all three gigs. And then we have the GeForce RTX 3060 Lite hash rate. This one is, and for these settings, all the 3000 series, we basically have GPU clock at 1700 and the offset at 250. We made no memory settings, even though I did test out adjusting memory and increasing the overclock, it did not see performance boost. If anything, we saw a little bit worse power consumption. So we have the 3060 light hash rate at 802 hash a second at 72 watts, the 3080 at 1.3, Kilohash a second at 162 watts, the 3070 Ti at 1 kilohash a second at 106 watts, and then the 3070 at 988 hash a second at 86 watts, and the 3060 Ti at 976 hash a second at 78 watts. So doing a little bit better than the 3060 light hash rate. Moving on from there, we have a few randoms here, primarily going to be the A2000 which is going to be 669 hash a second at 69 watts. Then we have the 1660 Ti doing 452 hash a second at 43 watts. And the A4000 doing 1.4 kilohash a second at 138 watts. And the 1070 doing 332 hash a second at 95 watts. Moving down from there, we already went over the 3070 settings. There is, I think, a couple extra cards in here. 30, the 3050 is what we're looking for. 546 hash a second at 50, 50 watts on, uh, or 55 watts on the RTX 3050. And then the 2080 Ti, depending on the model, this one's pretty wild. The Asus model does 1.1 kilo hash a second at 81 watts, but the the EBGA model, which is the overclocked version, is doing 1.15 kilo hash a second at 151 watts. They're both running the same settings. I don't really know what the power difference is here, but I've always had issues with these two cards basically being completely different from each other. So I've tried to track this down. This was even an issue on Ethereum as well as Flux and all the rest. I don't know why it is that way. It just is that way, right? Then we have finally the RTX 3090s, the big boys. Right now we're running, once again, still running that same overclock in the flight sheet, right? The 1700 and the offset of 250. And that is putting the RTX 3090 at two kilohash a second at around 150 or 180 watts. So really good performance here on the 3090s if you are looking for cards that are performing quite well. So of course the big question is, how are we doing? Or is that getting reported on the pool? 
because these are all octo miners with low end CPUs. And if we look at DNX here reported in Hive, it's at 62.95 kilohash a second. And then if we look at the pool, let me refresh here real quick just to confirm, but yeah, 62.47 kilohash a second. Pretty close on the pool, which is really good news. We're getting the same here as we're reporting in the pool. And if we look at our overall power consumption here uh, for the calculators, just to give you guys an idea on the profitability that we're seeing right now, we have essentially uh, take out the two kilowatts here, a thousand here, 3,800, let's say. Take out, yeah, we'll just take out 3.76. How's that? So we'll go down from 12 to nine. We're using around 9,000 watts right now, according to this just for DNX. And then we have the 6296 kilohash. So if we poke that into our calculator over on hashrate.no, we essentially have 6296, right? Hash a second. And then we are doing the 9,000 watts, the minor fee at 3%. And then we can calculate that out I did this wrong. Hold on. Let me do the <laughs> mega hash to giga hash. Let's do the converter. 62, what is it? 62.96. There we go. I was like, we're missing a zero there. We're missing a zero. That's what I thought. But there we go. And then calculate that out. And the difficulty is definitely adjusting. But uh, we're back down to about losing $3 a day on all of those rigs. And that's currently at 13 cents a kilowatt hour. If you went down to 10, for example, and went out with that, well, you should see a better rate, but it didn't, it's not updating for me here. Might have to refresh. Anyways, it keeps staying on 13 cents. It will be profitable at 10 cents. I was profitable overnight though too. And here's the thing, we're continuing to be profitable. So I'll show you guys here. The calculator is reporting us as unprofitable today, was reporting as profitable yesterday. But if we actually run the payouts and so on, and we have been mining for less than 24 hours and we've done the 309 Dynex already. Um, and then it's at eight cents a kill or it's about eight cents 0 0.078. And so if we calculate that out, 309 times the 0 0.08, we're at about $24 for the day so far. And that was, this was done at 10 o'clock last night. So we're looking at 12, 13, 14, uh, 19 hours is that right no that's not right 16 hours so then if we did 309 divided by 16 that's 19 times 24 equals 463 would be our projected if we maintain the current payouts that we're getting from echo pool and then times the 0 0.078 that would be 37 in the day and our power would be at 26 which means we would make $11 on the day. So we're profitable right now. If I calculate it outside of it, the mining, uh, I think though, we're already starting to see the mining adjust and more power coming onto the network. We can actually verify that here. If we go to the dashboard, you can see that the difficulty has shot up extremely significantly, right? So people are already catching on to this. And I would presume that we won't remain profitable on Dynex for more than a few days, but that's kind of the nature of the beast. Everybody, once they watch this video, will see another spike in difficulty and that sort of thing. But Dynex is still maintaining, you know, at the top of the, the profitability charts, at, even at 13 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, you can see here that across the board, pretty much, unless you go to AMD, Dynex is profitable on AMD. You know, you are seeing a lithium and Caspa kind of trading blows there, but we did have the dual mining video that we will be working on getting out for you guys too. So if you want to learn to dual mine, that should be on the channel too. Dynex with Caspa. However, the new setup is utilizing a lot of core on Dynex. So dual mining, it's not as profitable 
as you would like it to be. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Let me know what your experience is, overclocks and hash per watt, and all of that is on your particular GPUs. Love to hear from you guys. See if you discover anything new. I'll see you next Tuesday.